We're going to kick off this afternoon with a really special guest. He is a research cryptographer from Polychain Capital. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Luke. Um, it's working. It's working. Fantastic. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yeah, my name's my name's Luke. Um, I'm from the, the other side of the very large pond on the very long aeroplane. Um, fantastic. Thank you for the invite, Lee. Thank you for the invite, the whole Harmony team. And thank you for refactoring all the slides with boring polynomial commitment schemes into something with some actual tangibility. So yeah. Um, I work with a lot of different companies on protocol design and crypto code inside and outside Polychain. Um, this is one of the main themes of things I work on, but a lot of cryptography in general and then this expansive into uh, SNARKs. So today I'm going to be talking all about privacy and zero knowledge. Now, I think being in Web3 and providing some tangibility to all of the things that people have spoken about today on definitely the more metaverse understanding side of why is it that we are here? What, what brought us to be here beyond a 2009 paper? Well, perhaps in some ways it was a response to previous systems in society. I think a lot of people don't know this, and I'm going to focus on the timeline at the bottom. But this, when you go into your, your web browser now and you see that, that padlock in the top left corner, all that stuff on the internet is actually 1995. Anything SSL, TLS, all of this encryption stuff. So it may seem like Mr. Musk was, in fact, the pioneer at the 1995 with pay, Facebook, uh, sorry, with PayPal and X.com and whatever it may be. But it's, in fact, that he wasn't, it didn't have the tooling between when ARPANET came out in the, in the 60s until 35 years later. So enabling those behaviors allowed us to have different types of privacy. But the problem with the internet and the problem with the kind of Web 2, I think arguably a knee-jerk response that, that brought us Web 3, is that all of this privacy, all of these layers, all of these structures, they were added retrospectively. So we had 30 years of broken, confusing, unencrypted code, and it wasn't until 1995 that we could even have transactions on the internet. And if you, if you were to look at the TLS code, it's an 850,000 line per repo, absolute cluster, cluster mess, cluster mess of, <laughs> cluster, like real unauditable and even arguable built for surveillance. And I think now, building modular blockchains, I mean, to, be, to look at the time difference of providing privacy in just five years of, of Harmony's inception until now versus 35 years is enabling us to realize, okay, these are the problems. This is how we can solve them. And these are how we're going to do it going forwards. So yeah, the, the encryption, oh, it's also here. The encryption and, and security being added uh, retroactively isn't something we have to succumb to. We can design these and design these going forward such that we can't have these mass surveillance and when we move on to the zero knowledge stuff such that we can in fact play uh, by the rules. Um, just to highlight on what is tangible, these things have been in and around our lives for years. Um, going from the bottom from the a little more web two-y world if you could believe it, when he sat in front of Congress, Mark Zuckerberg told the truth. He did tell them that you, you cannot uh, go on onto Facebook, the, the Facebook server people, and start looking up people's names and get all their information. That is true. But it also doesn't matter in the slightest. Because they can know every single thing. I'm not here to, to give some preach about, I'm not some, some crazy crypto cypherpunk like they were in the 90s, the people incepting things. But, but it is true. The language of machines, metadata, is allowing people, irrespective of faces, to know almost every single thing about you. Two people in a WhatsApp conversation, that phone must know, the, the, sorry, that, that server must know the model of the phone, as to whether it's you know, iOS downloadable or Google Play Store downloadable. It must lo know the location of the person because of the, the server. It must know, naturally, how frequently they contact one another, how long the messages are between the two people. And fascinating but rather scary, crazy machine learning algorithms Take this information and deduce absolutely everything about your, your life. I, 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 read, I was watching something just a couple of days ago, and it was, a, it was like a, an expansion of a, an article in The Guardian. Uh, and it was a boring um, uh, author called uh, Peter Hitchens. And he said, the, the way he described this the first time, and he's absolutely not tangible to this world, but um, the way he described it was these things will not only know that you're gay before your mother does, but they'll know that you're gay before you do. 
and, and honestly, <laughs> when you start reading into this, it's, it's true. And on, on, the, on the bottom right, we have the censorship in one, and that's, that's a big part of, of, of course, of things we're seeing in a massive centralized server, things that are considerably harder to do in the world that we're all building. And then now with something that we actually have, my favorite part about DeFi is not the decentralized finance part. That was always going to come. That was always going to come with the web network. Couldn't have said for sure in what, in what capacity. But what it has done is it has enabled people to understand the requirement for these elements of privacy. Because this isn't a desired property. This is the MEV miners are going to screw you over. This is people are going to see your voting system. This is blockchain gaming will not exist without this because of the nature of a shared database. So moving on to a bit more about how this works in the blockchain context. And something went a little bit wrong with the next slide, but only very small, I'll explain. What we see as privacy in a kind of a basic transaction side, I will say these uh, anonymous question marks should also cover the faces of these two at the bottom. Something went wrong with the rendering, I'm not sure. But if we go from the bottom, we can, we can define anonymity as something like Tornado Cash. You know the amount, but you don't know the people. Go to the middle, confidentiality. This can be something like a shielded pool. You, you don't know the amount, but you do know the people. And the people here being pseudo pseudonyms. You are seeing the, uh, the transaction just in your Ether scan, your, your, your Bitcoin scan. And then how we're sort of defining privacy, whether this be you know, transactions of, of calling smart countries or actually of, of coins across a network or of tokens across a network, is the top one. You're having this identity and content shielding. And why do we have this? Because Web2 provided instabilities in form of how it's evade. And notable, like, it, it seems almost so subliminal in our lives that things like DuckDuckGo, Signal, Telegram, Tor, they, they seem very small, but the people in this room will use them every day. But what are they? They're actually a context to, they're a response, they're a knee-jerk response to things before. You know, if, if, if you were to go with Satoshi's first ever block, building this world was a, was a context just to the financial system, to, to potentially the crisis, to that article that was in, that was in the, uh, the Times, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, these things mightn't seem on the face of it, but if they're subliminally affecting us and we're creating these apps, there is a reason that they exist. And I, I feel that this is deep part of the reason. And the look that we have is that these systems aren't built for us, but they are built by us. I mean, the way in which Web2 evolved was there you go, this is it. And it did work, and you know, there are many fantastic aspects. But the way in which Web3 is evolving is we are defining how it is. We are saying, well, no, no, no. We will enable these behaviors in the future by creating blockchain privacy in a certain way. It won't be, it won't be entirely private. You know, there, are, there are many arguments. Read, keep, I encourage everybody to read in which you can't have everything completely private. You know, there are limitations we need to work with other elements of the world, but we are, we are building our own world, and we will define the private aspects, and we will define um, the elements of it which we, where we're allowed to shield our own contents for our own fundamental rights. In uh, a blockchain context, I like to kind of dissect this. On the left, you could even say a little bit of wishful thinking, a little bit of desired behavior. These, these metadata harvesting that I spoke about with, uh, with Facebook, it's actually far more petrifying, I think, with the blockchain. Everything is public. And I, I'm not sure what is worse, having just corporations or all corporations and people have all of your information. That is a problem. But once again, if you were to just be a little bit holistic, you could say it was wishful thinking because we could just continue having these now. Some people seem not to care. And I find when having conversations with people trying to get people to understand that the value of privacy in the subliminal way uh, doesn't come from the, the wishful thinking size, doesn't come from the pseudonymity. It actually comes from, oh, we want these things. Ah, I think we kind of need privacy if we want these things. If we're supposed to have these things, they're not going to work. Blockchain gaming, you can't share a database where everyone knows who you are. Call of Duty will never, ever work. That's how it is. There is a reason that democratic voting is private. It's so that we, in certain game theoretic scenarios, we can't see what, if you knew what other people were doing, you would have, you know, you'd have seeker fans, you'd have people playing to what other people wanted, you would have leaders of the group, you would have sort of what can be assimilated like off-chain collusion of convincing people. I mean, you were talking about um, the anti-collusion infrastructure before, and working on some, some decentralized voting systems, and you realize that it changes the behaviors back to, I guess, the, the one good thing about Web2, which is a bit of private voting. 
The same with supply chain. You know, people are always talking about, why don't, why don't, why don't Nike and Puma and Adidas hold on this? You know, it's some, if some factory somewhere is making the materials for these shoes, okay, because Nike and Adidas and, and business and enterprise, they don't want people seeing how they interact with the blockchain. They don't want people to know the order volumes they have. They don't want these things. So my only personal ad admiration for, for part of B2B business, even though most corporations are questionable in their practices, is that they do, do implore required privacy, like enterprises need privacy, which I like. And the last, and I will save this for the, the longest and the hopefully not too complex slide, is, is ZK. I, I'm sure some people have heard it, some people have heard it in the context of privacy. It's just from the first slide, it stands for zero knowledge. And the, the kind of staple definition is the ability to prove a fact without revealing anything other than that statement itself. So, I'm over 15. Imagine if that was it on its own. Imagine if, as every single person, as I did when they walked into this building and was required to show a corona pass. Mine comes from the Netherlands. Uh, mine has my date of birth, my name. Um, it, it knows the exact strand that I had. It knows the exact ID. That's questionably petrifying. I think probably less so with the, the good people running this event as opposed to when you go to a nightclub and what the American IDs have, like the number of eyelashes you have on them. It's like every piece of information you can imagine. Imagine if we, the, 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 the warden of the Pearl said, let me see your corona vaccine pass, and you were able to produce a piece of information that says, I'm vaccinated. And they let you in, and you were unable to lie about that piece of information. So this ability to reveal this piece of information, nothing else. If you think of it in terms of your, your, your financial, your DeFi, it, it's whitelists. It's saying, I'm on this list. And, and how this sort of works is just compressing like computation you usually run and making some mathematical statements about it. If you really want to know, I, I'm sat in the back corner. I'll, I'll speak to you for hours without question. And not, what, what, with adding this sort of value proposition, we are enabling behaviors to, to have access control, to have interaction with the blockchain. You may have heard of um, Snarks. Snarks on the, the, the fourth point, alleviating uh, privacy and scaling. I won't go too much into the scaling, but they are, in fact, the thing scaling the ZKVM. And they will do all if you're a Stark world lover, Starks, but don't talk to him about those. Um, and I think to understand the, the holistic side and the contextual side to this privacy allows people to understand the direction that we kind of have to take to have certain features, certain behaviors. Um, but the fantastic thing is we all get to build it everyone in this room, and we get to build it going forwards, and I'm sure it's a lot more fun than I've made it sound. Thank you very much.